Hello, everyone, and welcome to Deceive the Market Update. I'm here with Sean Todd, Corey Butler, and Brian P. Adams. Sean, I'm going to hop into it right with you. Um, watching the news, and we're seeing everything with the government. Um, how long do you think we're going to be lasting with this epidemic? It's a great question, Ben. I really appreciate that. I know it's on everybody's mind right now. Very uncertain, to be perfectly honest. I think we started this off a few weeks ago, and we believed we were going to be in this very short two-week time period. You know, we were hearing two weeks, uh, going to do a shutdown temporarily, the provincial and federal and municipal governments. But now I believe we're, gonna, we're looking at time frames outside of that. Uh, I think personally, we really have to be prepared from a business owner perspective or a family perspective to be at least living in the state for... It could be four weeks, could be six weeks, could be eight weeks. And I think we have to start preparing our mindset for that. So it's very hard to say. Uh, I would just listen to Benjamin Tal uh, from the CIBC. He's a, chief, a deputy chief economist there. He was saying everything is so reliant right now on the vaccine. You know, if we get the vaccine sooner, this shortens this whole time frame. And if we don't have a vaccine in place uh, a period of time, this is going to become quite prolonged. Corey, you're someone in my group of circle, at least, that has kind of been out in front of this, even more than a couple of people that I really thought about. How do you see this lasting, and what have, what kind of recommendations do you have some, for someone? Well, I, I think the, you know, as we try to flatten the curve, you, you know, that everybody, this, this self-isolation at home, um, in terms of, you know, further lockdown measures, I think are really the key to success. I think society is as a whole is struggling to stay self quarantined. I, I think, you know, the, the, the exercise of just going to the grocery store, you know, brings us out of isolation and touching other things and touching door handles and all these things. And we get into this kind of perpetual cycle. That's a challenge, but you know, at, at some point we're, going to get past the peak numbers and the numbers are going to start to level out and we're probably going to get into a little bit more uh, in terms of society being able to move around as opposed to how we're locked down right now. Uh, the timeline, it's challenged. Uh, like Sean alluded to previously, you know, we thought, okay, this is just going to be a couple weeks. And then now it looks like we're definitely into eight weeks. So, um, you know, we're into a much longer period now than I think we first thought. Um, so, you know, I think everybody's challenged to know what that, you know, timeline actually looks like. We've gone from the kids, uh, you know, being out of school to the beginning of April to now that, needle has moved and nobody's really come out and said they're going to shut school down for the rest of the year in Ontario, but some of the other provinces have already been ahead of the curve on that and doing that already. So it's really, it's unknown. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not a believer that I think there's a vaccine coming in the next couple of weeks. So I think the timeline gets extended longer, right? So it's, people doing the right things and staying home is kind of the key to success right now. And Mr. Adams, how are you doing with all this? Oh, great. We're, uh, you know, we've been hunkering down now for almost two weeks and uh, uh, being a ba baby boomer, we're uh, perhaps more uh, susceptible than, uh, than others. And so we, uh, we took it very seriously. But uh, as I told some clients this morning, I, I don't have a crystal ball and I don't think anybody does as to how long this is going to continue um, or how bad it's going to get. I think the one thing we've learned is that we don't have control over everyone and everything. And so as a result, we've seen on the news that some people are being very uh, conscientious about this. And uh, we're seeing other people who uh, are, uh, you know, going out laissez-faire and doing whatever they want. And uh, if you take that to a grander scale, uh, countries, you know, some countries like Canada are being very um, conscientious and rules-based about things. And there's going to be other countries who, you know, are going to do uh, as if, or act as if it's business as usual. 
and they're the ones that are going to prolong this uh, longer than it probably needs to be. 100%. And you've been through uh, 87 and 08. Where do you see the differences in this compared to them? Well, the biggest difference is the fact that this was uh, caused not by a, a uh, economic uh, problem or a, an economic faux pas, uh, as many of the others were, but this is, uh, this is something that's been caused by a disease. And that disease will be uh, solved and then uh, life will move on. And the markets too will move on and the economy will move on and rebound. And, you know, even, you know, the only thing that I've come across uh, that was somewhat similar was 9-11. 9-11 was not caused by an economic problem. It was a terrorist attack. But we saw that rebound very, very quickly. And, you know, the market takes into account what happens in society, what happens in the economy very quickly and rebounds from it. So, you know, I think that's going to happen in this case as well. Perfect. No, that's great advice. Sean Todd, you, um, we've been talking about what we should do um, through our thought process, there's a lot of reactionary, a lot of fear mongering. What advice would you give to someone that is being very overreactionary right now with their investment funds? Uh, right now, I think I just, I would want them to just slow down and look at what's factual. I know that we're going through the state of fear. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty and certainly it causes us all to feel a little bit of anxiety. I think that uh, I would recommend they really look at what are they going through and how are they prepared for it? They may be more prepared for it than they even realize. Uh, look at your financial plan. Uh, look at what you're needing right now. So as an example, if you're a home, then look at your cash flows and what do you have uh, ready for that so that you could sustain your home for the next couple of months without worrying as much as you are now. If you're a business, then I'd look at your efficiencies and I'd look at your cash flows to make sure that you can survive over the next couple of months. But I think if we did that, if we take the time to step back and look at the facts and if we're prepared, then I really believe that's going to lower our overall anxiety. And Corey, on the wealth management side, I'm going to ask you the same question. There's a lot of reactionary people out there. How are you dealing with those people? What are you suggesting for them? Uh, well, I, for, an, for existing investments that are in the market that have gone down, it comes down to, you know, what's your time horizon? Uh, if you're not needing your money in the next couple of years, then, you know, then, then that aspect of concern is eliminated. I think if you have short-term income needs, um, whether you're losing your job, whether you have reduced pension income, then those need to be evaluated with your uh, portfolio. And if you need to set further cash aside in your portfolio, then now's the time to do it. If you're looking to allocate into the market now, well, everything's on sale. Um, so I don't think you need to stretch very far to have, you know, a Pro probably a pretty great experience looking back in 18 to 24 months from now. No, that's great advice, especially on that long-term outlook. I think that's a lot of people are, are not seeing a light at the end of the tunnel that they're just looking in their fridge and they're like, Oh my God, what's happening next? Brian, same question. Um, take it right from the top. Yeah. So we need to keep in mind that uh, losses, uh, any losses that have been incurred, are incurred on paper and it's only when you get out of a fund or sell a fund that's when you lock in those losses but until you do that the losses are paper losses and knowing that the market is going to rebound from this and knowing that the market will come back as strong if not stronger from it um, you know if you lock in those losses you're going to be very very sorry long term Whereas if you stay the course, um, then you have an opportunity to rebound and gain back and gain some additional uh, growth in your portfolio. And uh, as Corey said, you know, I agree. Uh, there's uh, some real bargains to be had out there. And, uh, you know, I would stick to the tried and true um, type of uh, investments, the blue chips that are going to... Uh, stand the course of time. John Todd, if you had one advice for someone out there, what would it be? 
right now, Ben, I think is just to take stock of uh, everything in your life right now. I think uh, if it's from an investment perspective, then it would be for my retiree clients. It would be make sure you have enough cash uh, in your portfolio. You know, we call, we call this a cash wedge in our terms, but uh, make sure there's enough cash there to supply you enough income over the next year or two uh, without having to take on risk. For my long-term investors and long-term focus clients, then I'd be, there's opportunities now for you to have uh, engaged with the stock market and with the mutual funds or stocks to, uh, to see some opportunities and growth. And then for you personally, it's just to really make sure that everything is honed up. Uh, make sure that you've checked your financial plan, your beneficiaries are intact, you've got enough life insurance, you've got enough disability insurance, and if you don't, now's a really great time to re-examine those and make sure you show it up. But if nothing else, that'd be one for each one of those areas. And that's it. Uh, stay the course. Stay the course is the right course. Corey, same thing. Um, the, I think the, you know, the, the challenge that we have in the stock market now is we go a lot of the times the, the PE ratio is the number that everybody looks to. And as we look out in the coming quarters, the, the forecasts are challenged. And so what I tell people is you really need to pay attention to the price to cash. How much cash does that company have? Can they withstand the storm? That's really the key to success. And generally the majority of the large blue chip dividend payers have, uh, you know, good cash positions on their balance sheets. And I think that's where you need to be looking. And I think you need to be looking, you know, south of the Canadian border and in Canada as well for those opportunities. On the personal side, you know, one really needs to be taking care of their health right now. And I think it's, you know, find that hobby, that craft, make sure you get outside, get some air, I do find with the way things are right now, we're probably spending a little bit too much time in front of our screens, myself included. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No, 100%. I think uh, having a uh, routine is super important for me just to touch on a little bit myself. I've been working on a couple new skill sets. We have the time. We have the energy. I think you need to take a step back from the screens for a couple seconds and kind of hop into something new. Uh, Brian, how are you feeling about all this? What investment or advice would you give to someone right now? Well, just uh, not an investment, but just on a personal advice. Uh, I, I think everybody's focusing on the doom and gloom. And I think they need to remember some of the, uh, the good that's come out of this. It's enabled people to be uh, more, have more empathy uh, towards their common man and woman and uh, as a society in whole. Um, you know, we're appreciating some of the uh, people who do things for us, the medical people, the first responders, the uh, people in a grocery store, the pharmacy. We're, you know, we're appreciating what they do and the job they perform day in and day out so that we can continue. The farmers are going to be producing food in a very few months for us so that we can eat. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's given us more time to spend with family, maybe in some cases a little too much time, but uh, we'll survive that too. But I think, uh, you know, there's, there is some good. Uh, one of the things I saw the other day was they were showing a, a map from space uh, of the world as a whole, and they were talking about how much pollution has decreased because we aren't going out there 100 million miles an hour producing widgets and as a result as a result and not driving cars everywhere and the pollution has gone down exponentially so there is some good that comes out of uh, everything including this 100% now there's definitely a lot of optimism in your your speak there and I really appreciate that because a lot of people have been a little bit more negative I'm going to throw it to a round table just quick if you guys have any last comments now would be the time no nope, just right. stay home and stay safe and the rest of us uh, will do likewise and if we all do with that and remember to remember our distancing um, we'll we'll get through this together people helping people is a beautiful thing 
All right, I'm going to sign off for Corey, Sean, Brian, and I. If you like what you heard, please follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram pages at Asibda. Uh, we also have our own podcast featuring Sean Todd and Corey Butler called The Mind and Money Show. If you guys have any questions for us, we are always by our phones. Please feel free to call us, text us, email. We will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much for Thanks taking your time today. Thanks a lot. Thank you, man. Thanks, man. Okay, Thanks, man. Bye-bye.